Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpa bana chapam Anima di biravritam mayukai Raham mityeva vibhava ye bhava Indra Gopa Parikshipta Smaratu Naba Janghika Guda Gulpa Kurma Prashta Jayishnu Prapadanvita Naka Didhiti Sanchana Namajana Tamoguna Padadvaya Prabhajala Parakrita Saroruha Sinjana Mani Manjira Mandita Shri Padambuja Namaste. What a wonderful day it is today. Last night, in deepest sleep, the goddess revealed herself to me in a way that she never has before. And now I feel like totally empowered, like <laughs> I can't do anything wrong. <laughs> I guess I'm in love. <laughs> anyway, this uh, set of names that we're going to discuss today is about her feet. And her feet are wonderful and marvelous because they transmit her blessings to all the living entities that she's created. Usually the gods and goddesses have uh, mudras, huh? like Abhaya Mudra and Dana Mudra, to give blessings, fearlessness and mercy. But in her case, she doesn't use these mudras because her feet or even just her toes are enough to give all the blessings needed to the living beings. And I've experienced this. <laughs> so this is all real. Uh, it's not just some imaginary religious iconography. This is what I've been trying to tell some of my uh, sadhakas in our course group. That this is not, this Sri Vidya is not just another imaginary religious trip. It is the reality. And if you taste it, you will know. So, Nama 41. Indra Gopa Parikshipta Smaratu Nabha Janghika. Her calf muscles look like the quiver of Manmatha, the god of love. We talked about the quiver of the god of love full of arrows of flowers. Uh, five different kinds of flowers uh, for the five senses and that she uses these arrows to control everybody. <laughs> she has the power because she controls the senses. She is the Kundalini, the life force. So everything goes through her. She is also the prana, uh, the life energy. So, there's no getting away from it. <laughs> She's in charge. Saundarya Lahari, 83, says, To win the heart of your Lord Shiva, the five-arrowed Cupid, god of love, has made your legs into an arrow case with ten arrows of toenails. <laughs> so just with her toenails alone, she can win over Lord Shiva. Uh, she can be victorious even over the uh, Nirguna Brahman because the Saguna Brahman is that which gives him what he wants. Next is uh, 42, Gudha Gulpa. 
She has round and well-shaped ankles that are hidden. If you see any of her pictures, she doesn't show her ankles. Huh? Her ankles and legs are only for Shiva. Nobody else can know them. Uh, or one who has achieved the state of Shiva, Shivoham. He can know. But again, this is under her control. She determines whether or not and how she reveals herself. So we cannot force ourselves on her. We cannot influence her in any way that she doesn't want to be influenced. Uh, but simply by the presence of her ankles and her toes, Lord Shiva becomes bewildered. <laughs> Next, 43. Kurma prishcha jayishnu prapadanvita. The arch of her feet is more beautiful and curvier than a tortoise shell. But Shankaracharya expresses his anger for comparing her feet to that of a tortoise shell, which is hard. In Saundarya Lahari 88, he says, the toes of your feet sustain this universe. He's not even comparing the entire feet. He says only about the toes. Lord Shiva knows the softness of your feet. And that is why he held your feet with great care during your marriage ceremony. How dare they, the Vach Devis, uh, compare such soft feet to a tortoise shell? So interestingly, uh, this shows that the uh, Sahasranam is much older than Saundarya Lahari. Saundarya Lahari is maybe 1,200 to 1,400 years old. But uh, Lalita Sahasranam is older even than Vedanta, in my estimation, and the estimation of many Vedic scholars. Of course, those who are afflicted with the man blunder, <laughs> who think that God has to be male, they can't appreciate this. They want to see that Shiva or Krishna or Vishnu are the supreme and not Devi or Shakti or the goddess. So, well, that's their problem, you know. <laughs> Actually, we have no quarrel with them because that type of worship is a stage in bhakti yoga and certainly is necessary for karma yoga. So we don't quarrel with them. We simply let them, let them be and wait for them to wake up <laughs> to the real situation. Oh, by the way, when we talk about her bodily parts being auspicious and like that, uh, again, this is not arbitrary or just poetic, but this is from a great Vedic scripture called Samudrika Lakshana. Lakshana means qualities, external qualities. And Samudrika means of the ocean. So of the ocean of auspicious qualities, these particular body features are known to be highly auspicious and the symptoms of a great personality. In the Buddha Sutras, there are a list of 32 auspicious bodily symptoms, also from the same source. So next, Nama 44. Naka didhiti sanchanna nama jana tamoguna. The rays of her uh, toenails remove the ignorance of those who bow before her. When devas or even demons pay their reverence to her by bowing, the rays of the gems emanating from their crowns are no comparison to the rays emanating from the nails of her feet. The rays that come out of her nails destroy the tamoguna, the inertia and ignorance of those who worship her. It is also said that she does not bless with her hands, but with her feet. We went over this before. 
She does not have the abhaya and varada, uh, gestures, mudras. Uh, but she has four powerful goddesses in her four hands, and these are her weapons. Huh? The noose or lariat, the elephant goad, and the sugarcane bow, and the five arrows of flowers. And each of these is, they're not just inanimate objects, but they're conscious. They're also goddesses, and they're very, very powerful. And so when we worship her in a formal way, we also worship these goddesses, her weapons, by which she controls everyone in the universe. Now, 45. Padadvaya prabhajala parakrita saroruha. The beauty of her feet is much more than a lotus. Generally, the lotus flower is compared to the eyes and feet of gods and goddesses. Saundarya Lahari, verse 2, says, Gathering the tiniest speck of dust from your lotus feet, Brahma creates the worlds, Vishnu sustains them, and Shiva, pulverizing them into ashes, smears his body with them. Now you know why we put on the sacred ashes. You see, Lord Shiva started this custom. And it is an element of his worship of Devi, of his Shakti. See, he worships her. He loves her so deeply that he takes the dust of her feet, makes it into ashes, and then smears it all over his body. Try to understand. You see, these, these Vedic customs and the elements of sadhana and puja are not just antiquated, old-fashioned, arbitrary, or even uh, just customary things. But these are all rooted in the ancient history of the universe. But because people are ignorant, they don't read the scriptures. They don't know all these things, huh? Just like this video, because it's about the Sahasranam, will probably get less views than the video I made the other day where I'm just rapping, huh? <laughs> People are so silly. They don't know what's really important. So they take the superficial things. Like we were talking last night among our little group of volunteers that maintains our course site. And we were looking at the views on this channel. This channel, since the beginning, has something like 146,000 views. And we were saying, well, it's great that our number of views has grown, but this is like one day of views of a popular video you know, like uh, something about dogs or, or some movie stars, kids, or some nonsense like that. They get more views in one day than we get in, what has it been now, seven years? Going on eight years? So it just shows you what people think is important is so warped and stupid. <laughs> it's no wonder they spend thousands of lifetimes in samsara and never do what it takes to get out. The particles of dust from her lotus feet are the most powerful spiritual substances in the universe. So if Shiva makes them into ashes and pulverizes them and spreads them all over his body, shouldn't we do that too? See? This is, this is called the Tripundra, the Tripundra, the three lines. And this is called the Bindu, the dot. And we'll get to this when we discuss later on about the Sri Chakra, that the Bindu, the dot, the dimensionless dot in the center is actually the source of the whole universe. How is this possible? Well, this is Brahman. 
Brahman has no dimension, no measurements, no boundary, no qualities, no actions, no change. You see? It's, it's a nothingness. Yet, that Brahman is the source of everything that exists. And it's also the substance of everything. See, that nothingness. And it's not nothingness in a kind of dark way that nihilists paint it, you know. The emptiness, the nothingness. You know, it's only fearsome if one is attached to bodily existence. When we see things from the spiritual point of view, this nothingness, this emptiness, shunyata, is the highest refuge. It's the greatest source. It is the womb, actually, of the entire universe, the creator or creatrix, the mother, the goddess, you see? So in the ultimate essence, God or the controller or the origin of everything is female, is feminine. It has to be, it has to be, because only in her womb can the Hiranyagarbha, the egg of the universe, gestate and give birth to all the phenomena of life. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.